That's right, and of course, if you follow uh, the map of Africa, it comes around something like this. Mm -hmm. Now, about right in here is where that French plane crashed mm -hmm. in a torrential rain, and it is conceivable, although we do not know for sure, uh, that that also may not uh, may have been associated with the disturbance which is later noted here, and which by this time, on the 2nd of September, had already developed into a very severe hurricane. And on the penetration of the Navy reconnaissance plane on this date, winds were already up to 135 miles an hour. She grew rapidly once she started growing. Yes, uh, probably particularly uh, in this area. And of course, no ship reports were reporting to us at this time. Mm -hmm. And then the course was just as you show it. Now, in the uh, earlier days of us uh, following uh, the storm, uh, there was every hope uh, that she would actually veer to the north, even east of the Bahama Islands, and stay out in the Atlantic, away from everybody, preferably. Uh, didn't you have reason to suspect she might very well head uh, northward ahead of this time? Yes, this was our expectation at this time, because in the upper air, that is what we call the middle troposphere and upper troposphere, uh, which to the layman, I should explain perhaps, is in the neighborhood of 15 to 20,000 feet. The upper troposphere is from 20 to 40,000 feet. There was a very strong trough located in here, a trough of low pressure. And of course, the circulation of winds around the trough of low pressure is something like this. They come up, and on this side, they're southerly. On this side, they come down to the trough, and they're from the northwest. So that it appeared to us, since this was very well established and quite strong that when the hurricane reached this particular area, just to the each east of the Bahamas, it would be caught by these southerly winds and taken harmlessly up the Atlantic. But Donna just wouldn't behave according to the rules. That's right, and of course with time, changes went on. Uh, this trough flattened out and weakened, and then it is our belief that Donna itself or perhaps we should say herself, uh, uh, helped along her own mo uh, movement. Because, of course, if you have the storm here, the air is flowing in at low levels, spiraling in toward the center. It rises in the center much as air goes up a chimney. And, of course, the air has to go somewhere, out at the top. So it flows out at the top, and it seemed to build an area of high pressure to the north, which reinforced the easterly winds and helped her to continue going toward the west. And even after that, however, the winds ahead were very light and variable. And actually, we consider that Donna responded to the steering current more poorly than almost any other hurricane that uh, we've ever worked with. Well, that's a very strange thing, but I would also be uh, willing to say, and I'm sure you'll back me up on this, that you probably have collected more accurate data on this hurricane than on any other one that has come, well, uh, practically than on any other one, period. Uh, you're correct. With the reconnaissance planes of the Air Force and the Navy, the research planes of the Weather Bureau, which are based here in Miami, we have accumulated a tremendous amount of data, which a number of people, at least uh, five to ten research people, will be poring over and working over, and out of which they hope to bring better forecasting procedures which will help us in future years. Now, there is an important aspect of the situation which uh, I think should be gone into at this time. At the time that the Weather Bureau is following these storms in order to save life and limb in the areas which might possibly be affected, there is also another important piece of work being gone on by the Hurricane Research Bureau of the Weather Bureau. And it is especially going into high gear at the present time as all of this data which has been collected is being returned to the Weather Bureau. Their job is to correlate this data, analyze it, check into every conceivable known theory as to those steering currents, and in the future time, when we have another one of these babies, much more accurately uh, come to conclusions. Is there any hope of eventually being able to compile enough data, Mr. Dunn, to really uh, hold these things uh, in check as far as knowledge of where they're going to go? I don't believe, Bill, in uh, uh, your lifetime and mine, perhaps I should say particularly in my lifetime, will we ever be able to make perfect hurricane forecasts in every detail? The thing that we're working toward, of course, is better forecasts, more improved forecasts, and earlier forecasts. Now with this storm, uh, we kept up with it very well, a little ahead of it, 
But when someone would ask us, where is it going to be two days from now? Or when it was out here, where will it be two days from now? We had to simply tell them that we really didn't know. Or uh, at the most, give them an educated guess with not very much confidence. Uh, but we will, we believe, uh, gradually improve. But it's a long, hard, tedious job uh, to come up with an additional one or two percent uh, of improvement in the verification of these forecasts. And there is the part that was so hard to uh, explain to a lot of the people who called in here at WCKT, and I'm sure we're calling in perpetually at the Miami Weather Bureau as well. The uh, hurricane warning area, which was continually extended by the Weather Bureau, uh, covered the area where it would likely, possibly have serious effect within a, a given length of time, in plenty of time to get those uh, hurricane precautions underway. Uh, that in itself is sufficient. We can't guarantee that those uh, precautions you take are not going to be wasted, perhaps. But to the present stage of the meteorological science, that's the best that can be done, and that's a very good best. I think you will agree after the results here. Bill, if I might uh, uh, bring something out. On a 360-degree compass, a 10% error in the direction of movement, and we have to admit that we're lucky to be within 10% of the actual direction of movement, that in about 24 hours, with an average rate of movement, we're likely to be off as much as 50 miles in the position of the hurricane. In other words, it amounts to this, that on a 24 to 30 hour forecast, we're really lucky if we're within 50 miles of the exact position of the center of the hurricane. Well, I'm certainly glad to have that put uh, so clearly and beautifully, uh, Gordon. sometimes people just expect too much from us. I'm afraid that's the case. But they have been, I think, uh, the public has been particularly good in this particular storm all the way through. You pointed out to me that something like 90% of all the people had either gotten to shelters or had left the most seriously to be affected areas after those warnings came out down in the Keys. Uh, that's right, and uh, uh, we have never had such excellent cooperation from the public. And, of course, that... Uh, uh, Credit uh, belongs not only uh, to the Weather Bureau, but to the Red Cross, to Civil Defense, to the news disseminating agencies. And I think perhaps at this time, Bill, that I should express our appreciation, the Weather Bureau's appreciation for the uh, valuable and uh, really uh, necessary uh, work which uh, Channel 7 uh, did in connection with this storm. Uh, because I don't believe that uh, any storm has ever had the radio and TV coverage, which this one did, at least in this section of the country. Well, thank you very much, sir. And, of course, without you, we wouldn't even have gotten off the ground. We wouldn't have done anything other than just sit here and wring our hands. Uh, I believe we're ready for some fascinating film, and I mean fascinating film. Uh, just recently, uh, Jack Leverins actually got set to go out there into the center of the eye, the WCKT News sent newsmen into the eye of the Hurricane Donna twice. First, uh, WCKT Newsman Dick Ash made the flight aboard a Navy Hurricane Hunter Friday. And uh, WCKT's Jack Leverins flew into the storm aboard an American Air Motive Corporation flying laboratory on Friday. This, by the way, is a civilian outfit under contract to the Department of Commerce, the Weather Bureau. Uh, Leverins said he went into the storm three times, twice at 14,000 feet, once at 18,000 feet. And this plane is equipped with a gas turbine, the loudest thing I've ever heard, by the way, to supply power for all equipment. At this point, Leverens reported winds of 133 miles an hour on the north side of Donna. He said the flight wasn't as rough as he expected. I can't imagine what he expected. But he did say that flying in the eye is like flying in a bowl of milk. He couldn't see anything but white clouds, which Jack described as beautiful. Gordon, uh, suppose you tell us just the purpose of these hurricane research flights and how they help you in plotting a hurricane. Of course, as... Uh, uh you had indicated a few uh, minutes ago, the purpose of the flights into the hurricane uh, are to gather data, uh, basic data, wind directions and velocities, humidities, pressures, uh, which will eventually be used, in fact, uh, very shortly be used, uh, by the research people in coming up with better forecasting techniques. I had the opportunity of uh, flying on a rather Pacific uh, flight aboard one of these planes a few weeks ago. Uh, beautiful weather, flew over Nassau, I never saw a beautiful sight in my life. But the thing of most immediate interest was not outside the plane at that time, it was inside the plane. The incredible array of technical equipment which the 
Department of Commerce Weather Bureau has in store.